old friends are kicking off our number two uh, yes. right here on the Rich Eisen Show yes. in advance of Prime Video's evolution of the black quarterback. It is a three-part docuseries hosted by Michael Vick as he travels across America to explore the history and impact of black quarterbacks on and off the field. And uh, the director of this documentary, Prime Video's The Evolution of the Black Quarterback, Fred Anthony Smith, is here, as is the executive producer and the CEO of Smack Entertainment, Constant Schwartz Marini, back here on The Rich Eisen Show. Good to see you guys. All right. Thanks for having us, Rich. Now, we, 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 before we get to this, we, uh -oh. we, we got to talk about us, Fred Anthony. Okay. We, go, we go back. Cause, cause it, well, <laughs> well, like a car seat, right? And and because uh, those who might be watching back at the NFL Network and NFL Media Group are probably pointing at the screen going, look at this right here. Because I know you are, Chris, right? Of course, it's wild. What's going it's on? Awesome. It's really so wild Chris, to see good to see you. Now, now, I, I feel like this is, El you, you, this is like Goodfellas where, you know, you, you, you know it, it's been a long time. You've been away a long time. He's He's... <laughs> He's no longer a uh, production assistant, right? Is that how we met? Back 2005. In the day? Wow. It's a long time. So NFL Network was two years old. 2005. I just dropped off a kid in college who wasn't oh. born when we met. <laughs> wow. I don't understand because I've stayed flat. I follow my mom's kind of <laughs> ethics there. Like she's yes. 98, but she really just stayed at about 50. So I'm, I got to be younger than her. I so, understand So that. I can't relate to this conversation. I know that. <laughs> but you dropped off a kid at college like yes. you used to drop a yes. shot sheet off on the desk. Yeah, yeah. I remember those But days. you don't do that anymore, not do you? Not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> you and Emmy, sir. That's yeah. what you do. You know? And so... Um, Congratulations. Well, thanks, Rich. And it's it's amazing to be here and to see old friends and a uh, huge fan of the show. So I appreciate you saying that. And it, it is just amazing, you know, how life works sometimes. Yeah. How did you guys get connected, Constance? I don't even remember to be honest. I might actually, was it through Snoop? Probably All roads through Snoop. Back to Snoop. I think but, it was through Snoop. Because I, I left the NFL by the time he got there. Right. I was gone. Um, so I think it was doing some shoots with Snoop. Maybe so, the Snoop Youth Football League. So Snoop and then, so what's crazy is the year leading up to Super Bowl, Super Bowl in Los Angeles, I was doing a lot of stuff with Snoop. Right. And Snoop reconnected me and Constance. And here we are. He was my number one draft pick. <laughs> well, I, and by the way, great choice. Great choice. Great choice for sure. Because, uh, again, I, I, I just, I, and I'm not just saying this now because you're directing this and you're doing so many other great things. Uh, it was obvious that you were overqualified for what you were doing for the very beginning, uh -huh. you know. And I just hope that I wasn't too deep at some times because, you know, Susie, my <laughs> wife, will frequently uh, point out sometimes that um, – when shot sheets were handed to me back in the day, I was in my own tunnel vision, and there's some people that might push back about anything that I might have said or well, done. Look, or it, it was all love uh, on my end, Rich, and that's that's why we're here today because uh, you know it was it was great just being around you and so many of those guys that you know that we came up with and came along with, you know. Uh, Game day time. final and stuff yeah, like that, right? All, with me, uh, me, Prime, and Mooch, right? All, like all of that. Mike Muriano, all, all That's those Mira, guys. Right now, yeah. who's now at, at Prime He's Video at Prime, as well. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. The oh, best training ground. I mean, look, for me, starting at 1991 at the NFL to all full circle, it, right. there's nothing better. So let's talk about uh, what, what we're here to talk about right now. <coughs> so um, why, why now? Why do a documentary on black quarterbacks right now, Fred Anthony? So, you know, when you think about Super Bowl 57, um, and Jalen Hurts and Patrick Mahomes facing uh -huh. off against each other for the first time ever. You had two black quarterbacks facing off. Mm -hmm. That was cause for celebration. And some people were like, well, well, you know, they're here, so why is it cause for celebration? Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons is it took 57 years. 57 years is a long time. But at the same time, with as many black quarterbacks starting in the league now, um, that is reason to celebrate because we know that there were so many guys that didn't get their chance and so many guys that went through through tough times and sacrifices and death threats and things of that nature just to have the opportunity to play quarterback. So, uh, so it was a perfect time to celebrate, but also to pay homage uh, to the guys that, that did it before, the guys that are doing it now, and, and what better time than, than now, really. So you're referring to folks that might be most obviously to some people, Warren Moon is Warren what you're Moon, talking about? Warren Moon, Doug Williams, Shaq Harris. Um, a ton of guys that you know didn't get a chance to even play quarterback that played quarterback in in college and couldn't play once they once they got to to the to the NFL. I mean Tony Dungy, uh, who's uh, featured right. in the in the doc, talks about 
playing at Minnesota, and he was leading the the Big Ten at, at the time in, in passing, facing off against Warren Moon, leading the Pac-8 in passing, and neither one of them were drafted coming out of the NFL, uh, coming out of college uh, because there weren't a ton of black quarterbacks at the time. Or mm. they wanted him to play another position. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, 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 why don't you try wide receiver? Why don't you try uh, another back, spot? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and again, uh, I understand we're talking about names back in the day, but it was just uh, right around uh, a couple years ago when yeah. Lamar Jackson was told, yeah. why don't you run at the combine? Yeah. We'd like to see you do other things than just yeah. spin it and throw it at the combine. Yeah. And he's like, no, right. yeah, not going to do it. Right. Well, I mean, even the first person featured in the, in the doc, Jalen Hurts, talks about being at the combine and people asking him if he's willing to come in and do other things and be a Taysom Hill, Cordell Stewart type of gadget player. And that was, you know, five, that, six years ago. That was, that's what he was told? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. So, so, it's, uh, so it's, it's, it's not ancient history, uh, but history is being made. Well, certainly not ancient history either, based on this uh, clip that we're, we're, we're going to show here to our live audience right here. Um, and uh, for those who might be watching it back later because there's some cur commercial music in it or what have you, then we, we might have to pull it. I'll explain what it is afterwards. But this one uh, got me because Michael Vick, who is your, what do you call him, narrator or your... He's the one that's taking us on this journey. Okay. Yeah. Uh, talking to Dak Prescott. And uh, this, this, was, uh, this was something that uh, caused, gave me some pause. And uh, again, this is a... From Evolution of the Black Quarterback, available on uh, Tuesday, September 24th on Prime Video. Dak Prescott saying that when he was on a visit to Dallas as a collegiate player going through his top 30 visits, that a player in the Cowboys workout room said, we're not going to have a black quarterback here. And then a club promoter in town told him the same thing. Yeah. When you're sitting there hearing that, what are you thinking? When you hear that, Fred Anthony? Well, you know, it's crazy. You know, I'm not, I'm, it's, it's, I'm saddened, but I'm not surprised because you hear stories like that from, from guys all the time. Um, but at the same time, the reason that we wanted to make this film is because we wanted to celebrate the progress that's been made. And you, you think about stories like that, that Dak had to face. Uh, Dak just signed a contract to make him the highest paid player in the NFL history. Sixty you know, million per. You know, so so that's the that's the progress and that's the positive that that we chose to look at, you know, doing this, doing this this doc. And it doesn't shy away from the things that, that these guys face like this. I mean, Russell Wilson had a very similar story where he talked about the week after he won the Super Bowl being at a golf course and basically being told, This isn't for you, you shouldn't be here. By somebody that was at the at the at the golf course. Um, Where in is, Seattle? This is right after you won the Super Bowl. In Seattle? This wasn't in Seattle. Okay. Yeah, but um, but this is something that that was told to him, and he's he's riding this high, and Russell was like, "Look, I I choose to see the positive, and I just know some people need healing, but I'm gonna I'm gonna be positive." Um, but people still still face these sorts of things, and um, and it's unfortunate, but uh, but a lot of progress has been made. Um, and that's one of the things that we really wanted to focus on on this on this doc. I'm biased, obviously, but Anthony, Fred Anthony, as, as we call him here, um, really struck a perfect chord to celebrate the evolution and also highlight the racism that these guys still face. I mean, you're hearing it firsthand from, from Dak or, you know, the Russell Wilson story, um, which is an easy thing to do. And I, I kind of almost looked at him as how an actor, you know, immerses themselves in a role because mm -hmm. He was in it, right? Like hearing all these stories and still had to make sure that there was a balance in this. And I don't think there's any any director could have done what, what he did. And like you said, starting at the NFL in 2005 um, and sitting here now, I can't imagine how you feel, um, you know, knowing that you're a part of change. And there's a line in the doc that Common says that it's a revolution. And it, it truly is. And it's a celebration. And so right. just as a follow-up, because in the clip, Dak said there was a player in the mm -hmm. workout room who said, oh, you know, when he said, I'm here yeah. <laughs> to interview yeah. with the Cowboys. Yeah. And the answer was, well, yeah, we're not going to have that here. Um, and he wouldn't name the player. So uh, I'm assuming off camera you found so, out. Okay. So, <laughs> but, so, so two things. So, so one, it was, it, was, it was weird because, and Michael and Dak actually talked about it off camera, 
there was, they were like, there had been black quarterbacks in Dallas before. You know, Quincy Carter had been there. Randall Cunningham was a backup there for, for Troy Aikman. So, so it was an odd thing to say, but no, he didn't say it off camera. Well, no, the thing that I wanted to ask is, is was it a player of color who just said knowing the area or was it somebody he, he, who was he, white he, saying I don't want we don't want you here he wouldn't give us any more information okay. but that wow. yeah <clears throat> yeah because that's what I'm thinking yeah. like I'm wondering the context yeah you yeah. know yeah yeah Fred Anthony Smith the director of uh, evolution of the black quarterback and executive producer Constance Schwartz Marini here on the Rich Eisen show it's on prime video next Tuesday a few more minutes uh with them so how what how did this come about Constance like just do sitting I around think it, was, or? it was the first week um anthony came to smack and we were starting to put just like our development two years ago like how long has this been two and a half years okay yeah, i mean this happened years. pretty quickly oh yeah that, in, two in, and a half years is, is in tv years. yeah <laughs> <laughs> getting something developed sold made right and on the air um and we were sitting around and I, he said hey you know i've been kind of thinking about this one how do you guys feel about it and michael strahan who's obviously my partner at smack and i both were like let's go like what do you need from us and how can we do it and there really is only one person that could have taken us on that journey and it's michael vick i mean you'll see it when you watch it just the adoration that all these players celebrities fans just have for him there's there's someone that said there is no way of telling the history of the black quarterback in the nfl without michael vick yeah. And uh, is is his journey covered in this time? Absolutely. So, so you know, what's interesting about Michael, and I've known Michael for a few years now, and this was always something that him and his wife had talked about, wanting to do something around around the black quarterback and just the evolution, because he says a lot of times people come up to him and they're like, you know, you changed the game. Um, but he was like, there was guys before me that gave me the opportunity to do what I do what I did, and um, so there was that. And then also, when you think about the evolution of the black quarterback, mm -hmm. and you think about that timeline. So 1978 is a huge year. So that's the year that Doug Williams comes out of college. That's the year that Warren Moon comes out of college. Fast forward 23 years, uh, 2001, Michael Vick is the first black quarterback drafted number one. Fast forward another 23 years, and it's 2024, and I'm sitting here with old friends, and there's more black quarterbacks playing in the NFL than ever before. So he's literally right in the middle of that historical journey. Yeah, with Caleb uh, Williams, number one overall it, it, himself. It, exactly. Uh -huh. So so he's right in the middle. And then when you talk about his professional journey and his personal journey, one of the things that he's talked about and he talks about in the doc is that, you know, once he rejoined the NFL, he wanted to be a, be a positive change and be a positive contributor to to society and, and be an ambassador for the sport that he loves. And this is an example of that. Um, and and he was great. The guys were great with him. They loved seeing him. I remember uh, Steve Young, who flew flew himself down, flew his, flew in a private jet or flew himself privately um, to to meet Michael here in Southern California to to golf and to talk about their journey, uh, which which we go into in the doc. But um, uh, I guess in 2001, Steve Young flew to Atlanta, which a lot of people don't don't know, and worked out with Michael. And he was like a left-handed quarterback, mobile. He was like, "This, I, this is this is my guy." And they talked about their history and their journey. And, and Steve was almost in tears being there with Michael. So, um, so really seeing Michael interact with the with the other players was amazing too. Oh, you gotta have ask Steve. I mean, he he had to work out with Michael and realize it's a good thing he's retired. <laughs> <laughs> can't keep up with uh, Susie and Amy to ask him uh, about the story, right? Uh, that's right. Look at you producing. Uh, you can't funny. stop. You I can't won't stop. stop. You only know one speed. Uh, I'm only on one speed. I understand that. Uh, oh, this is awesome. This is great. So I guess then <laughs> let, let's finish up with, with where we are now. What's your sense of where we are now in this subject matter? You know, I think that we're at a place now where, where you're going to see more and more black quarterbacks. And some of them are going to be good. Some of them are going to, some of them are going to be great. Shador Sanders. Uh, Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> you can't stop. You can't turn it off. Uh, there you go. Uh, some of them, some of them right. won't be very good, but they're going to get a chance. And I think at the end of the day, that's all anybody wants is a chance. So, um, so onward and upward, but I think we're at a point now where we're just going to continue to see more and more black quarterbacks. Um, and people will be judged by how well they play on the field. And not anything else, hopefully. Well, I mean, do do you think we're in a, a spot where <laughs> where where evaluator evaluators, uh, those in the halls of Rich, no water here. No, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so choked. Do we up. Gotta, can we, we'll get you one. Sorry, no worries. Um, 
It's so do you think right do, now. Do, it is do, emotional. Do you think we are in a spot right now where evaluators, those in front offices, do not see race when it comes to evaluating a quarterback? I think, I look, right I think we're in a better spot. Look, we're we're in a much better spot than we were when you and I first met. You could just come um, on and RJ, just go on and don't go worry about it. So I think I think yeah. we're in a we're in a much better spot than we were in 2005, and and there's still progress to be made. Um, but you know, one of the things that I think it was Doug Williams pointed out in the in the doc, he says that we're at a point now where you have black backup quarterbacks. Where it was like that was never the case, even when you had mm. black starters start to come into the league. Um, you know, you never really had black black backups. Mm -hmm. And he says that's important for two reasons. One, you know, oftentimes those backups are the ones that become offensive coordinators and become coaches. So that also impacts, you know, coaching, um, which also impacts management and front office and things of that nature. So so strides strides have definitely been made. Um, but again, I think that that we all know that we still want to continue <clears throat> to get better and at, at certain things and and um, and there is going to be progress that still needs to be made, but this is a this is an issue that wasn't solved in in you know in the years before we right. were born and won't be solved in our <clears throat> lifetime. But the idea is that every generation moves the ball forward a little bit more. All right, what else is going on with you, Constance? You must you got fifty million things up in the air. You, st <laughs> you and Stray get still giving away cash and prizes in the form of a pyramid or what? Like what else is going we will on? Be. With you? you want to come back? You know <laughs> the answer to that. Okay. Question. Okay. Like, why would you even ask? I mean, I might as well put it out there. We just got our pickup for season oh, eight. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I am. So, I'm going to get in so much trouble. Am, Look at Jose. Yeah, it's, all right, Jose. It's okay, Jose. I need a chance to 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 give away the full freight mm. because you know. I was going to win somebody $50,000 if she hadn't blown the clue herself. <laughs> oh, you oh. can't ever blame the contestant. I, excuse me. I 100% can because I was ready to give her, give her that money. Can we pull up the clip? Um, I don't know if we have the rights to do it, but you, I, I, that's what happened. I know, I know all the shows for you meld together, but for me it stands out. You were one of our favorites. For I sure. would I would come back in a heartbeat for that sort of. Your thing. friend, Coach Prime, not so much. How bad was he? Oh, he was bad. He started <laughs> he started singing, um, like lollipop, lollipop. Like he just didn't even know what the clue was. So. He was entertaining, but well, I mean that's yeah. that goes without saying. Yeah, true. You know, um, but yeah, I mean, Gla I think I did it with I did it with Joel McHale. Glaze wasn't that good either. <laughs> He was not that great. <laughs> I understand. Wow. I don't want to get in trouble. Wow. But, Jay Glazer takes a straight. Excuse me. Like, excuse me. Excuse me. You know what I was born to do on this planet, right? <laughs> give away cash and prizes. That is correct. Yeah, that's that's what I was born to do is give away cash. At any rate, great to see you. You too. Please have me back anytime. Thank I would love you. to have you guys back anytime. You, Always fun here. Thank you. so thrilled to see what's going on with you, Fred Anthony. Hey, it's, 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 it's a pleasure to be here and to see We're very you lucky. And Mike and Chris and everybody. Don't yeah. don't yeah. feed the animals over and there. And Smiley. Good to see you. You know, and, smiling. And, 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 we were the and, ones and, in the trenches with each other back in the day, Rich. Come on now. Nobody, yeah. Listen, and I'll say <laughs> this. I'll say this in front of you guys, and this is no offense. It's great to see somebody for whom... NFL Network losing them was a real loss. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? And our win. You know, it's your win and, and their loss. And you guys, there was a door and an ass, and they didn't mind it hitting you. <laughs> so, wow. you know what I mean? Man. Not with me. Oh. <laughs> I take, I take I love the umbrage. I take umbrage. <laughs> I take, not Good me. see you guys. Okay. <laughs> uh, evolution of the Black Quarterback available Tuesday next week. Uh, it's a three part docuseries. Check it out on Prime Video, which, of course, means you could see it right here on Roku. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.